Good afternoon, Packers fans. Welcome to your Packers Daily Chat, coming to you live on the Cheesehead TV social channels, including TikTok. What's up, TikTok? Hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing better than the Packers were yesterday. No doubt about it. The Packers embarrassing themselves and fans across the world by not showing up, essentially, to a 23-7 shellacking to the Minnesota Vikings at U.S. Bank Stadium. Clearly, the offense the defense yeah, the special teams kind of held their own but a lot of problem areas a lot of missed opportunities lots of blown chances on both sides of the ball clearly this is a team that needed a tune-up and utilized week one hopefully to get a lot of rust out of their system now they'll have to turn around and welcome the bears to lambeau field on sunday night and hopefully hit the ground running and and put a lot of this behind them, much like they did last year after dropping that horrible game to the Saints and then going on a winning streak. Hopefully that's what we see starting on Sunday night. Good to see everybody in the comments. Hope you're all doing well. I want to give a quick shout out to uh, a lot of friends, a lot of friends around the world, but mostly number one here on the YouTube channel. I want to give a shout out to our friends on the Carry the G Club. That's right. We're kicking off the 2022 season with a brand new way for Packers fans worldwide to hang out with us here at Cheesehead TV. It's the Carry the G Club. Carry the G Club members get custom loyalty badges showing how long you've been a club member attached to your name in all of our live streams and YouTube comments. You get special Cheesehead TV emojis featuring Corey and myself and access to our weekly virtual happy hour to come ha hang out, talk Packers all year long. Next happy hour is tomorrow night. I'm sure it will be a great group therapy session. Joining the Carry the G Club is as easy as tapping that join button you see on the desktop version of YouTube. And by the way, speaking of Carry the G, in case you missed it over the weekend, and in case you missed it on the live stream or on the blog this morning, etc., Cheesehead TV has launched our very own beer called Carry the G. That's right. Officially launching this week in Wisconsin. It'll be available in the Green Bay area starting, I believe, on Wednesday, I was going to say tomorrow, but on Wednesday uh, in the Green Bay area. And then soon thereafter, you'll be able to get it in the Milwaukee area, southern Wisconsin, etc. You will be able to purchase your very own can, cans of Carry the G. And if you happen to be in the Green Bay area for the game, if you're going to the game on Sunday, boy, do I have a special treat for you. Ladies and gentlemen, we are proud not only of Carry the G, the beer the official beer of Cheesehead TV. But if you're going to be at the game on Sunday, you want to be heading over to our friends at the Rush Center, have the Plaza Pit Stop ready and waiting for you. Three hours before kickoff, Corey Banky, one Corey Banky will be in attendance. Make your way to the Plaza Pit Stop before every home Packers game this year and meet a Cheesehead TV co-founder three hours prior to kickoff. This week, it'll be Corey Banke. The pit stop is strategically located on the plaza in front of the Rush Expo across the street from Lambeau Field. The pit stop itself opens three and a half hours before kickoff. Corey will be there three hours before kickoff. There's music. There's beer. Carry the G. There's water. There's soda. They're making Bloody Marys. All available for you to purchase. There's no cover charge. And our friends from iHeart 97.3 The Game will be on site doing live radio broadcasts most importantly, if you are a Patreon member or a Carry the G member, Corey will buy you a can of Carry the G. That's right. Just prove it. Just show us your receipts, people. Show us how you are either a Patreon member or a Carry the G member, and Corey will buy you one of these. And spe speaking of, I mean, it's the end of the day. I, I need to crack mine. Let's go. Come on. There we go. Now we're cooking with gas. What is going on? Carry the G, people. Find it everywhere in Green Bay this week, then in Milwaukee, and then maybe, who who knows, maybe someday the world. But for now, it'll be a Wisconsin-specific product. How are we all doing out here? How are we all doing? We, have, uh, we, got, we got some people ready to go in the comments, I see. Ryan starts us off with a super chat. Would She Said TV beer be a good beer for beer brats? You know, I want to pump it up and say, yeah, of course it is. Uh, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, the answer, of course, is any beer is good for beer brats. Even beer I hate is good for beer brats. It's just, it's beer. Put it on the brats. Let's go. I'm all in. Ed, thank you for the super chat. 
Seems like the Vikings never got the memo on how awesome our defense is. You ain't lying. I will say, um, I just put up a little while ago here on the YouTube channel, my chat with Andy Herman. And, you know, Andy went through some of the numbers and some of the drives. And, you know, <laughs> as I told Andy, you go and you rewatch the game. And there are stretches where the defense plays very well. And they had a number of times they got off the field, didn't allow. I mean, hell, they had a couple three and outs and had a number of times they forced the punts, etc. But man, the the Vikings did do a very good job of taking advantage of some of the things the Packers were maybe not trying to do, but uh, they are expected to do. Um, obviously, motioning Jefferson caused all sorts of problems, moving him around the formation. Vikings uh, did did their homework, so to speak, and for whatever reason, the Packers were not ready for it. Kind of shocking in this day and age, 2022 year of our Lord. Yeah, the, Justin Jefferson has more yardage than any wide receiver in the history of this game through his first two seasons, but you're not expecting them to move him around and try and free him up? Curious. I don't know, man. I don't know. Kevin, thanks for the super chat. I said run the ball so many times yesterday, I was like Hodor screaming, hold the door in Game of Thrones. <laughs> We're D&D &D coaching this game. Man... Yeah, I mean, it's nice to see both Aaron and Matt post-game and then Matt again today talk about or lament the lack of opportunities for A.J. Dillon and Aaron Jones, Jones especially. But, man, we've heard this song and dance before. You know, for whatever reason, they get into the fire and they just completely abandon it. They do not lean in. I, the old adage is, don't think about X's and O's, think about Jimmy's and Joe's. And your best Jimmy's and Joe's are in your backfield. Those two dudes are your best players. This offense is so much better when it runs through either one of them. Aaron Jones, Aaron Jones especially. So, yeah, the, the abandoning the running game, I expect it. Like, at, at this point, I'm not even surprised, right? But, man, just the complete – and it's so blazingly obvious when they do get those guys involved, when they are the focal point of the offense, everything flows – Everything opens up. Everything gets better. But they go through these stretches of, like, they have a few nice plays. They start moving the ball. And then, I don't know if you want to call it, they get greedy or they get desperate. But all of a sudden, it's now we're going to call a play-action shot play. When you're going against a team that has played cover two shell pretty much the entirety of the game, at least a two high shell. Yet, no, we're desperate. We're going to keep calling these deep shot plays or deep developing routes. And well, why? You're moving the ball fine. You're running the ball. You're giving it to your backs. You're getting them in space. I just, yeah, it mystifies me, man. It mystifies me. Matt, thank you for the super chat. Who not Tom instead of Hanson? I believe you mean why not Tom instead of Hanson? Uh, well, I didn't see him much on the right side during camp. So I don't know how much work he's gotten at right guard. Um, they did put him at left guard, obviously, when Runyon went down. <coughs> Sorry, guys. I'm battling a cold. Um, but yes, they uh, they certainly didn't determine that, you know, they, 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 they certainly didn't determine that they thought Tom was ready uh, right out of the gate at right guard. Obviously, they had to put him in at left guard uh, due to the circumstance and injury, but there's no question that in my mind, I think Tom is is better and ready to go and should get these reps, even if he's going to make mistakes, which he certainly did. You, know, you go and look at the tape from yesterday's game. There's certain instances where Tom is overwhelmed and, the, you know, he he was not, you know, flawless. He was not perfect. But I'd much rather he start to get that, you know, game experience now. I mean, he's got a ceiling out the door. Whereas Hanson, I think you know what he is. I mean, he can get you through something if you have to. You know, your center goes down, if Myers goes down. I think he can get you through a game, maybe a couple games. But I just I, – I think you're playing with one arm. I think I tweeted that out last night. I think you're playing with one arm tied behind your back as an offense with Hanson out there at guard. Oh, excuse me, guys. Uh, Porkmaster, what's up, man? Thanks for the Super Chat. I'm still pretty pissed off, but what can, can you do but move on to next week? Long season, also – I am praying to the football go gods for O-line health. Yeah, according to, you know, uh, Ryan Woods reporting, doesn't sound like Bakhtiari will be out there on Sunday night against the Bears. Good chance 
neither will uh, Elton Jenkins. You're going to have to make it work. Now, on the plus side, you're not on the road. You're not in Minnesota in that horror show of a dome. Hopefully, it's a little kinder to those guys. You're able to fire off the ball a little bit more, not having to look in, not having to, you know, <laughs> go on silent count all the time. That should breed a better performance. But yes, yeah, the health of the O-line is a concern. There's no question. On Culture, what's up, man? Thanks for the Super Chat. As bad as that game was, some of these young kids have me excited. I see some potential there. No doubt about it. From Quay Walker to even Christian Watson with the drop. Uh, Romeo Dobbs, I thought, had a nice game. I mean, there were a number of performances where guys definitely showed glimpses. No question about it. Zach Tom being another guy. Absolutely. Tyler, thank you for the super chat. Not sure who made the least or worst adjustments, Badgers or Packers this weekend. Rough one for the state. Jimmy HC soon likely why he turned Matt LaFleur down. Um, yeah, well, that's a whole nother conversation, that last part. But as far as the Badgers go, I didn't, even, I didn't watch the Badgers game, unfortunately. I was busy. But uh, the Packers, you know, adjustment-wise, you can look at the second half defensively, and they do a much better job on Jefferson in the second half. Now, how much of that is really them taking him away and how much of that is the Vikings just trying to, like, milk the clock and run the football? And, you know, are they really trying to produce explosive plays the way they were in the first half, et cetera? But, you know, there was a little bit of an adjustment there, I would say, from the Packers. Nuclear family, what's up, man? Thanks for the super chat. It's upsetting that he dropped it, but I am am I the only one excited about how Watson torched P2? Dobbs was great in camp, but the pack like nine even more. I mean, he's got the explosiveness. He's got those ath rare athletic traits. That's why they traded up for him. There's no question about it. The ceiling is through the roof, so to speak. Um, but, you know, one of the narratives after that pick was made was about the drops. And when your very first chance to silence those doubters and you drop it, now he's going to, you know, be fighting that in his head probably for a while. There is little doubt that, uh, you know, one of the things that one of the knocks on the kid coming out of college was, you know, he had issues with drops. And you looked at the sample size and you thought, OK, it's not a great sample size, but certainly seems to be an issue. And right out of the gate on a play that should have set the tone. Should have been a home run. Announce your presence with authority. Kind of reminded me of Brent Fullwood back in the day. And this is, I'm really dating myself here, but I remember Fullwood's rookie year. We were all so excited about him. And he took a kick return back. And I think it was the first kick return of the preseason. And he took it all the way back and he held the ball up and he fumbled it right before the goal line. You don't want to be that man. You don't want to be the Viper against the mountain. You know, you don't want to drop the football in that instance. Got to hold on. Got to make that play. And I know he said, and to his eternal credit, he talked to reporters after the game and he said, that's a play I make 99 times out of 100, et cetera. I'll make it every time going forward. It's nice to see he didn't duck reporters. I will say that's that's appreciated. No doubt about it. Um, Uncultured, what's up, man? Thanks for the Super Chat. I hope Jimmy is Badgers head coach soon. I've been waiting for them to fire Chris almost as long as I waited for the Packers to fire McCarthy. I have hope. Y'all have some Badgers haters up in here. I don't know. I don't even know. Nicholas, what's up, man? Thanks for the super chat. I thought it was Mike Penton who likes the softy, soft, off coverage scheme. Could have been Jerry Gray this whole time. Somebody needs some blame. Somebody needs some blame. It's Monday. We got to blame somebody. Let's go. I'm going to carry the G and blame somebody. I don't know what I'm saying. Um, You know, Mike had that thought process of you know keep it all in front of you yeah you're gonna play off you're gonna rally you're gonna come up rally up and tackle but you know that's not just mike and that's not just uh joe that's the league right now that's how almost everybody plays you know they play off and they play that cloud coverage and they play mostly too deep stuff and you let them complete it in front of you and then come up and rally and tackle i mean that's the idea now Packers didn't do a great job of that yesterday, obviously. Way too many instances of guys running free, usually Jefferson. Um, I would like, and I said this to Andy a little while ago, I would like to see them try to dictate a little bit more, try to be a little bit more physical. And I thought that was the point 
when Matt made the switch at defensive coordinator for them to be a little bit more aggressive and physical and try to dictate terms, so to speak, on the defensive side of the ball rather than always allowing things to happen to them. Certainly wasn't the case yesterday. Not to excuse the Packers' performance, they're a drop TD and a better play call on fourth and goal away. I mean, yeah, those are lost opportunities, right? No, no question about it. And the game looks entirely different if Watson catches that and rolls in for a touchdown. And if Aaron Rodgers, say, pulls it and walks in, which he would have if he runs the RPO as it's, you know, classically designed as far as, okay, you see that defensive end crashing down, you should keep it as a quarterback. He runs into the end zone. Scott, you know, untouched, no question. Um, that said, you know, you still have to adjust to the circumstances that you find yourself in. You know, there, there's uh, plenty of time there in the third quarter, even when it's like 20 to seven or whatever, when they're trying to battle back and they're still trying to take these long developing shots. And I just don't get it. Like play the game that's there in front of you. Um, but yeah, no, they're close. And that's what Aaron Rodgers was talking about in the post game, right? The idea that, you know, not taking anything away from the Vikings defense, but they made a lot of their own mistakes. They dug their own grave repeatedly. Um, and that's what gives you hope, right? They look worlds better in that game than they did against the Saints last year. So progress, I guess. I don't know. William, thanks for the super chat. I watched Roger's interview and he took some fault for it. As much as that's the solution, man, his attitude and body language is his Achilles heel. Yeah, I don't, I don't, uh, you guys know, long time viewers know, I don't, body language, I, I am not a denizen of the body language police town. That is just not where I live. I, I get people do it. I get why, but I don't care. I just, yeah. Was he upset on the sideline or was he disappointed or was he frustrated? Of course he was. Yeah, he's human. Shocker. Um, as far as the interview afterwards, yeah, he absolutely owned it. He absolutely owned it. And that's the stuff that, that's why I don't care about the body language stuff. You know, it, he's allowed to be frustrated and he's allowed to kick himself, which he did after that game. You know, he got up there and he said, you know, we had so many missed opportunities, myself included. And he said, I know we could have scored way more than seven. Like, there were opportunities for us to score way more. You know, he owned it and he always does. I know people think they have this perception of him as, I don't know, casting blame and like, you know, throwing people under the bus or whatever. Maybe that's been fomented by Greg Jennings and Jermichael Finley over the years. But whenever he has games like this, he owns it at the at the podium if you pay attention. That rarely makes headlines, though, right? If he goes and has some snarky comment to somebody uh, on another podcast or a show or whatever, that gets blown up a thousand times. But if he goes up there after a stinker of a game and takes ownership of his poor play and decision making, which he did yesterday, that doesn't get blown up. That doesn't get, you know, plastered all over Twitter. It's just kind of in one ear and out the other and people move on. You know, I appreciate it, man. I tweeted it out last night. I appreciate it. hundred percent. Arthur, thanks for the super chat. Prediction on Bakhtiari, Elton, Lazard, Quay this week. Well, Quay Walker sure sounds like he could possibly play. I know we were all very nervous after watching him leave yesterday with that shoulder injury. Matt seemed to indicate they will, quote, give him the week and hope that he and hope that he's ready to roll on Sunday night. Um, really, really hoping he can go because we saw some really fun and exciting stuff from him yesterday. As for the other three, man, it's impossible to say – uh, how with the severity of Lazard's injury, the fact that he didn't practice whatsoever the last week and a half doesn't give me great hope. And as far as Bakhtiari and Elton go, you know, Ryan Woods reporting says that they are going to sit Bakhtiari for this week as well, and most likely Elton too. So I think it's another week of uh, Newman and Yash at tackle is my guess. Jeff, thanks for the super chat. I'm officially worried about the future for 69. I get it. I totally understand it. I'm still not. I really am not. I mean, I know I'm a fool and whatever, but he had a procedure late in the off season, you know, and then he comes off of that and then starts practicing. They take him off the PUP. He's barely done. I mean, barely done any regular speed team stuff at all. And you're going to just throw him out there week one, play him 60 snaps in Minnesota. I think it's the right call. 
And I get that people are frustrated and I get that people are tired of it. I still have hope. Uh, Carrie. Oh, Carrie, get Carrie getting into it on Facebook. Let's go. <coughs> the floor has promised to do better too many times. We have traveled this road how many times? He needs to turn into a hard nosed, well respected coach and not a friend to players. Get mean, the floor, nasty mean. Nags? Question mark. A lot going on there, Kerry. Um, no, that's not Matt Lafleur. The man has won a boatload of games by being who he is, and by pushing the buttons he presses, and knowing his team, and knowing what they need. There's a reason they've never lost back-to-back -back regular season games. That doesn't excuse anything. Doesn't automatically mean they're going to win on Sunday night. But he knows what buttons to press, and he knows when he's got to push and when he's got to pull back, etc. And that's what's made him successful. He's not going to change his nature. He's not going to suddenly become, oh, what, you want more hard nose like uh, Vic Fangio? How'd that work in Denver? You know, the, the guy is going to be who he is, and he should be, because who he is has made him pretty damn successful. I understand it's frustrating, especially the day after a loss. We all want fire and brimstone. We all want guys thrown into the fire pits and everyone fired and blah, blah, blah. That ain't it, though. That is not how you get sustained success in the NFL. And Matt LaFleur has certainly shown he knows how to achieve some sustained success for his, through his first three years. I, I just don't think him turning into something that he's not is going to help anything around this football team. But, Kerry, don't think I'm completely dismissing you because I completely understand where you're coming from. I feel it, man. You guys watch the watch party. I get frustrated. I yell. I get stupid. Like, I get it. I totally get it. But you, you don't want a guy to just change his fundamental nature. It's the same thing when people talk about Rodgers and what he needs to do. It's like, you really think after 18 years he's going to change his approach? After winning four MVPs, two of them the latest back-to-back? -back? I mean, this is not going to happen, nor should it. Bearded, what's up, man? Thanks for the Super Chat. Not a good record when we're behind. Why do you think? Seems like we just can't seem to adjust when we have a busted lip. I just talked about this with Andy. I very much agreed. And it feels like they get behind, especially when they get behind two scores, they try so desperately to make it all up, like in one drive, when they've got plenty of game left. When everything calls for just matriculating it down the field, run the football, dink and dunk, they're going to play that cloud covers, they're going to play too high, just put it all there in, like, in your playmaker's hands. Don't have to try to take shot plays. You don't have to try these play action bombs like they seem to get into like i don't know like tense up or what have you but they seem to want to hurry up on the road to a comeback and then that breeds more problems usually by aaron trying to find a home run ball and protection doesn't hold up and then you're in trouble that's certainly what happened on the shot play where he fumbled no question about it uh what else we got zach what's going on man thanks for super chat in my opinion, Matt LaFleur 12 steady approach is great over a season, but intense games like last night or playoffs, it leaves the team lacking the juice it needs. I think it's pretty anecdotal, and I think it's pretty convenient. I mean, I get what you're saying as far as the playoffs go. There's no question about it. But, man, you don't get to the playoffs without that approach. You know, you got to take the long view. You absolutely have to. Folk, thanks for the super chat. 12 having a voice lead to the big contract for a lineman going into his 30s with the franchise's history of not doing that with O-line. Folk, are you saying they only extended Bakhtiari because 12 and he are friends? Or 12 wanted it? I think that's pretty foolish. I, I think, Brian, if anything, that was before the summer of our discontent last year with 12. I mean, if anything, Brian has shown that he is going to make his decisions regardless of what 12 thinks. I mean, I think that's pretty uh, that's pretty naive. Uh, what else we got? Ed, thanks for the super chat. I repeat, Devontae Adams' rookie season dropped a TD pass in the end zone against New England that my grandmother could have caught. I remember it well on the slant to the right, right? Would have wrapped up the game. Instead, we it was it's I, see, I always joke that it's fine that Devontae dropped that pass because it meant that we got to see Mike Daniels crushing Tom Brady to win the game. So I'm fine with it. I'm totally fine with it. But you're right. He had a number of drops that rookie year. He had a number, a number of drops his second year. Hell, he had, I think, 10 drops his sophomore season. So, yeah, drops are going to happen. It's a question of evening them out. 
get that get that jugs machine going, get your technique going, and improve from there. Carl, thanks for the super chat. Watching Dylan and Jones on that TD drive and how the offense picked up the pace and then abandoned it on the next drive was maddening. Thanks, Nags. I don't disagree, man. It's kind of what I was talking about earlier. Definitely don't disagree. Starters should have played, but his one half really worth it? KC starters played at least a quarter. The preseason conversation and arguments are going to probably go on all year long. I totally understand it. I still think Matt made the right call as far as, you know, taking the long view, as I was just talking about. I get the frustration, though, as a fan, like watching the Kansas City offense yesterday. Man, they were they were certainly humming, and they did play their starters throughout preseason. So, or not throughout preseason, but through a number of preseason games, number of drives. But at the same time, <coughs> sorry, guys, you can flip it around and look at the Vikings. They didn't play any of their starters. They seem to be holding up pretty well. But, of course, they were going up against a team in the Packers who didn't play any of their starters. So who knows? It's like an Escher sketch. You know, where was the end? Where's the beginning? We don't know, man. It's crazy. It's crazy. Uncultured, thanks for the Super Chat. I love the Badgers nags, which is why I don't like watching their slide under Chris. My songs today are Patience by Guns N' Roses and The Ecstasy of Goal by Ennio Morricone. Those are some those are some bangers right there. All right, we got some more super chats to get to. Soder, what's up, buddy? I think that the D can be fixed with a scheme change. Beyond Dylan and Jones being on the field for every play, I got nothing until Jenkins is back. Well, you're not going to change the scheme. You mean play calls and, you know, probably game plan a little bit, but you're not changing. The scheme's not changing. The scheme is the scheme. They're going to run it. Corwin, thanks for the super sticker. Really appreciate it, man. Five pounds from across the pond william thanks for the super chat everybody seems to get on the young receivers but they forget james jones and Devonte had huge drops especially on third and ten touchdown during the super bowl hell throw in jordy nelson jordy nelson probably kept aaron Rodgers from setting super bowl records with his drops in the super bowl so yeah guys have drops no question about it Corey, thanks for the super chat tough day here in vikings land as they bask in their victory monday yeah, you want Bach fully healed and ready, but man, that's a lot of money on the sidelines. At some point, he's got to try to go. Man, look, we have no idea what the conversations are. We have no clue what the medical staff is telling him, what he's saying as far as I want to go, et cetera. So I would hold off and hold back on some of those thoughts. Tyler, thanks for Super Chat. Good to have Bears as a rebound. I mean, we'll see. We'll have. Hey, look, I love that it's Bears. I love that it's Lambo. I love it's Sunday night. Let's go. Just show up. Show up with some heart. Bill, thanks for Super Chat. Is complaining that Jones only got eight touches LaFour's way of saying, stop checking out my plays, you turn. <laughs> I like it. It was interesting. He's like, well, I mean, at least he's owning it. At least he knows immediately that, man, I did not get Jones involved enough. Brad, what's up? Thanks for the Super Chat. Am I the only one who drank way more after that game because of the loss? We knew there'd be growing pain. Still a tough loss. We'll be fine. Carry the G. Man, that that was that whole Super Chat was a journey, Brad. Carry the G, indeed. Carry the G, my friend. You know you want to. Uh, Michael, thanks for the Super Chat. Really have to feel for 69. One injury affecting three consecutive seasons is brutal. Also, looking forward to week one versus Chicago. Our week four preseason game was bad as usual. You said it, Michael. Aaron Gonzalez, thanks for the super chat. I'm just happy we got the Bears this week. I'm with you, man. I am with you. Time for a palate cleanser. Faraz, thanks for the super chat. Nags, Packer fan in Chicago here. Bears Nation going nuts after yesterday. It's nice they aren't so defeated before a Packers game. Sunday night football should be fun. Very much so. I mean, last year, you guys know, I went to the Sunday Nighter against the Bears in Lambeau, and it was amazing. Bears fans were awesome, by the way. They were so much fun. I am very much looking forward to uh, that game against Chicago, coming off a win. It's going to be a lot of fun. Jonathan, thanks for the Super Chat. Why burn one of Winfrey's call-ups? For that, why not activate Torre? It's an interesting question, Jonathan. Probably because they trusted Winfrey and Rodgers likes him and knew that he would be where he's supposed to be. I mean, you're coming off a game where you're talking about miscues and missed opportunities and guys not being in the right spot, etc. 
I mean, Toure, there's he's a rookie who's never played a snap with Rodgers. Winfrey has at least two years banked with the guy. That's probably the thinking there. Corwin, thanks again. Is there anything more annoying than this? Adams had more receiving yards than the Packers wide receivers narrative. Oh, man. Just get ready and get used to it because it's going to happen all year long. That's very obvious. But no, there is nothing more annoying at all. All right, everybody. I'm going to have to get going. I can't thank you enough for hanging out, talking Packers each and every day, Monday through Friday, right here on the Cheesehead TV social channels. Please do me a monster favor. Hit like on the video. Subscribe to the channel. And don't forget, Sunday night, join Corey at the Plaza Pit Stop. They're at the Resh Plaza. You're going to love it. You're going to have a great time. And if you are a Carry the G member or a Patreon member here at Cheesehead TV, Corey will buy you a can of Carry the G. Of course, if you're not a member, just hang out. Come by. Buy a beer. Say hi. Talk some football. It's going to be a lot of fun. Three hours before kickoff on Sunday night. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. This is amazing. There's so many chats and so many. I'm sorry if I can't get to yours. There's a billion people just speaks to how passionate Packers fans are, and I love it, obviously. Thank you so much. I'll be back tomorrow. Uh, and then look for a new edition of Beer and Ball later tomorrow night, and away we go. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a great day. Go Pack Go. Yeah.